Okay, yeah, 1929. Did I tell you that? Yeah. I yes, you did. Thank you. Okay. I don't know when it changed, though. That's fine. Hey! Oh, hello. <laughs> it's 1930, according to mine. Oh, yeah, me too. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Vera. <laughs> I'm Adrian. Um, ooh, Dominic Murphy just texted me and said, you are live. So he was he was our one watching. Hi, <laughs> Um, okay. Let me focus. Yeah. I've got so many windows open. This is a test run of Vera and Adrian work from home. Um, we, I came up with the, oh, I came up with the idea maybe a few days ago and it became real yesterday. Um, and so yes, this is very much a test run. <laughs> Um, so we're just we're we're working it out. Yes, Adrian, talk for a second while I do things. Okay. Um, so um, the idea is with well, Vera and I, we're just going to talk to each other about things. Um, yes. We've been doing uh, a series of live events um, uh, for. Oh, I don't know if I turned the sound because I have my YouTube actually. But yeah, it's on. Uh, we were doing a series of live. Um, improvisation events at the Omnibus Theatre in Clapham uh, and um, since we can't do them live anymore because of the pandemic um, we are working from home like so many other people. That, yeah. yeah, is there anything you'd like to add? I guess we've known each other for a long time um, mm -hmm. and we've been like making stuff together in different ways and what's come come up is that we are both interested in improvisation the the big umbrella and um so yeah we were doing that live but also like this is an improvisation because we are yeah. making stuff up um what else yes and so the format for this will be we'll be here every tuesday on youtube and and we're being very generously hosted by omnibus and each week we will talk about something different so today we're going to be focusing on music next week will be food and we'll have a special guest next and week film and tv and then the week after is film no yes oh, no. <laughs> week oh, one of the month is books yes week two films and tv oh right sorry yeah. week three music week four of a month food with a guest yeah, and week also, five if we have a fifth week to the month it will be bonanza mystery week <laughs> okay. yeah yeah um and so i think adrian's gonna do some uh, a check-in a thing yes yeah we thought we'd start with um just checking in uh with each other uh, to find out how things are going but because that can be really awkward i have some conversational prompts right uh, which i used for a show what was that show called uh you bring the agony i'll bring the art i have a poster on my wall just there um i made these prompts for the audience so that they can and they were really effective i was i wasn't sure how they were going to work but people really did talk to each other it was quite difficult to get them to shut up so i'm hoping they're going to be just <laughs> as effective here um so this is prompt number one yeah. Um, and this is, uh, so Vera, um, tell me, how did you travel here today? I used my legs. Um, I was out a couple of times today because I have a puppy. Um, yes. Where is I, your puppy I, now? My puppy is probably in the kitchen asleep okay. because he was, he spent his first day at puppy, no, at doggy daycare. And um, amazing. Mm. I, I mean, it's amazing that it's open. It's mainly stayed open because it has the infrastructure to do so safely. And also it's looking after animals um, that belong to key workers. And I guess... Key animals. Could you call them that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't go hashtag key animals myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm a little bit... I do feel a little bit bad for like sort of going outdoors it doesn't seem important enough but I do it is because you, I'm dealing with a, a life 
yeah. human life. And he does need to be socialized. Otherwise he's going to be sort of scared of everything. So he's being exposed to different surfaces and textures and people of different ages and, and, and other dogs. So that's important, yeah. Great. Do you, did, how, did he report back? Did he have a good day? He got overexcited. He was a very timid puppy at the beginning of the day, and then he yeah. got confident, and then he got a bit overexcited, and he had to be separated from the other puppies. Oh no, I keep saying it's puppy daycare, but it's dog daycare. Okay, just because he happens to be a puppy. Yes, and uh, but he had a little first day friend. There was oh. another dog that it was today was their first day. Um, he was, I think, completely and utterly happily exhausted because um, he came home and like took himself into his little pen and like had a little snooze. So that's a good sign. And he was very happy. And I really want to say Harry Hounds of Hackney are amazing. Great. Um, so that was that was not at all anything like an answer I would have expected to the question. That was um, that prompt worked surprisingly well. How did you travel, Pierre? Do we ask you the same question? You can if you I like. Yeah. Um, I just yeah. So I just came here from my kitchen on foot. Uh -huh. yeah. Are you wearing shoes? Uh, no, I'm actually wearing um, these slippers, which I've had for years, and for like they very quickly got a hole in them, um, and that hole hasn't got any worse in the last two years. I keep thinking I'm going to have to buy more slippers, but um, it hasn't hasn't come up. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing, which they're like, they're, I think, felt on the bottom, some kind of really strong felt and then okay. knitted. Cool. Yeah. Where did you get those from? I don't remember. Um, probably from El Naturalista. I have lots of shoes from El Naturalista. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. yeah. They make very comfortable shoes. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them made out of materials that are not damaging the environment. Uh, some of them are leather, but you know, the kind of leather where the cows have gone, please make me into a shoe. So you don't feel bad <laughs> for wearing them. Please make me into a shoe. I don't know how that works, but they, I think they volunteer. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> also controversial, but um, yeah. I remember because didn't I have the first pair of El Naturalista boots and then you saw them, or was it the other way around? It was definitely the other way around. Uh, I bought my <laughs> yeah. Okay. I bought my first pair <laughs> of El Naturalista shoes in um oh I was gonna say in St Andrews. No, I saw them in St Andrews a good 10 years ago and then I bought them in London. <laughs> I'm sure that's how it went. And then I bought mine and then they developed a hole. This is riveting stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We're just, we're just checking in right now, but in two minutes, I'm going to start presenting the piece of music that I've- No, but um, actually I am quite serious about footwear. Mm. One of my bugbears about, I don't know whether to say Britain or the United Kingdom or the British Isles or England, but I feel that we don't have the right um, insulation we don't insulate ourselves properly yeah. like with clothes or with um building materials yeah and so what why don't you just get waterproof yeah these shoes, shoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay i don't have an answer to that question isn't <laughs> one of your bugbears also um people not pulling their socks up was that you no okay somebody else I don't have a problem with people wearing socks and sandals. Okay, me neither. I've never understood why people find that so upsetting. It seems a very comfortable choice. Yeah. It's not quite warm enough for sandals, but it's warm enough for shorts. I don't. I mean, I don't know what time of year that would be, but um, there must be like a little slither of year when you want to be wearing socks with your sandals just for comfort. Yeah, and also I think it must be a thing about like, what will people think of me? It's not very fashionable. And I'm like, Mm. I am not really into the whole too cool for school stuff. No. Like there's that um uh I mean this so this week is music week. There's that um Beach Boys song, isn't there? Play your own. No, that's not a Beach Boys song. Is it Mamas and the Puppers or is it Beach Boys? Play your own kind of music. 
I think that's the track. It was a B, B or a C side on a single. I bought the single. Oh, this is not the track that I'm talking about today, but we've got one more minute before I start talking about today's music. Um, Are you timing yourself? I'm just looking like I. Oh, no, it's, it's 1940. OK, let's start with the, <laughs> the meat of the. Um, well, Adrian, Adrian is the experienced broadcaster. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, really demonstrating my skills so far today in the last. <laughs> How minutes. would you describe me, Adrian? That's really unfair. You just sprung that on me. <laughs> no, but like that you could say whatever and I have to accept it. <laughs> it's like on me. Well, okay, but when I'm podcasting, I always ask my guests to describe themselves so that I don't have to do it. Oh. You are an actor and you are not a storyteller. Neither are you fancy. Um, this is all I'm remembering things that you've told me in the past. Um, you are um angry inside um what? you are you you haven't told me that but i know that you have a lot of anger okay. righteous anger okay. <laughs> <laughs> um what else you are um yeah you're a, you're you're a connect i well the way i would always describe you you're a connector of people um you're a very skilled connector of people and you have as I'm discovering lots of ideas. Yeah, I'm the chancer, right? So the yesterday I was like, hey, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah, okay. Thinking that it would come to fruition in maybe a month's time. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm a yes man, so that's all right. Um, Are you a yes man? No, not generally, but to you. Oh, gee. Um, what was I going to say? Carry on. <laughs> Is what yes. I was going to say. Okay, it's 1941. Oh, no, wait, no, no, this is important. Um, if you have, viewers, if you have any questions or comments, you can oh, yeah. um, send us a little, oh my God. Hi, Marie McCarthy, Caroline, Tina, Muzz, Lisa, and Dominic have types us chat. So basically, yeah, I'm not everyone. going to be like reading out chat throughout, okay, because I'm going to focus on my friend Adrian, but we're going to check in with the chat as we go along. And then if you have any questions that I think are interesting enough, I will um, bring them up towards the end of the show. Uh, we're also, I think it is important to say, just in terms of if we do respond to chats, we're 20 seconds ahead of you. So don't let that confuse you. We're yes. 20 seconds into the future as far as you're concerned. We don't know why that is, but that's, that's just the way it is. No, we don't know why. Uh, so yeah, De Dominici just joined us. I I saw. You um, you missed my um. <laughs> I'm gonna say something rude, and I'm like, we haven't said anything about content warnings. No, and yeah, we shouldn't say anything rude this week because there's nothing, there's nothing rude in what I'm presenting. No. So. But I'm pretty much disruptive all the time, so that might translate into me being rude. So I would say to Richard, Richard, you may have missed something that you were looking out for. Okay, that wasn't inappropriate. Well, yeah, because I tempered it. Okay. Right, okay, so. Beep, 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 beep. Over to Adrian. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, this week is it's music week. Um, and I uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wanna talk about an album. It's, this is a bit of a crossover. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter because in theory, last week would have been film and TV week. I was confused. I thought next week was going to be film and TV week. So I was a bit worried about doing two at the same time because this is a film soundtrack. Uh, this is the soundtrack to A Lot Like Love. Um, it's described as music from the motion picture. And the reason that I have this album, this actual physical album, is that Vera gave it to me. Uh, so I Young thought it would be people, nice that's a CD. Say, what, say it again? I said, young people, what he just oh, held yeah. up is a CD. It's a CD. This is a CD case. <laughs> and, um, All right, yeah, CD, it is a CD case. Yeah. Sorry. The CD's not in it because it's in my machine, but we're not going to play it. I was playing it earlier, but we're not going to play it for rights reasons. Um, what we would suggest, though, is that if you would like to, we're probably going to listen to it in a bit. I'm just going to talk about what I like about it. Um, and then we might listen to one of the tracks. We're going to listen to... Look What You've Done by Jet. So if you who are watching um, want to find that on your devices and listen while we listen, that would be great. Um, but we, I don't think we can play that live because we don't have the rights to it. 
No, we definitely do not have the rights. Um, but it is a wonderful song. Um, this whole soundtrack is wonderful. And this was, um, so for years, Vera was like, why don't you watch A Lot Like Love? It's a really great film. It has Ashton Kutcher in. And I was like, I don't think I like Ashton Kutcher. Um, so I'm not going to watch that. Um, and eventually she gave me this CD, the, the um, soundtrack album, which is wonderful. It has such great songs on it. Um, How would you describe the songs? Oh, they're a bit like... Um, 90s. Yeah, they are 90s. Like the one I can date is uh, Eagle Eye Cherry Save Tonight. That's definitely 97 or 98. Uh -huh. um, but it's more than that. They're, they're kind of like boys in loose jeans, the kind of songs that they would listen to. Yes! Yes! Okay. Boys in loose jeans! Semi-charmed life, third eye blind, come on. Yeah. Your, Smash um, mouth. Um, Aqualung. Yeah. <laughs> Travis, there's a song by Travis that I don't know at all. But yeah, so they're the kinds of songs that boys in loose jeans might wear. The kinds of boys who have a guitar on their back and maybe just, you know, learning how but, to play it. You see that this is like boys in loose jeans at a particular um, time because... Yeah. Because why? What was that movie? Oh my God, we've just... No. What was that movie in... um? Where the poster was this guy holding his guitar. And it had a cat. <laughs> he had a cat or the movie poster had a cat? The movie had a cat. And people were like, oh, the cat represents something. It's like a metaphor, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't remember <laughs> that at all. <laughs> the ballad of something. Anyway, I guess he wasn't wearing loose jeans or maybe his legs were thin. And so oh. he's loose on him. But that's that. we're not talking about that kind of man. Right. No, no. This was, I mean, it's more about an era and a person in that era, I think. Yes. Because yeah. this is, so this is from a time before skinny jeans. Um, a couple of years after this, people started wearing skinny jeans and it was very weird. Um, and now, of course, it's normal. So um, this is from before then. Um, and it is a lovely film and I have watched it and it's one of the better rom-coms for sure. Um, yes. It's one of the less problematic rom-coms, isn't it? So who started liking rom-coms first, you or me? That I don't remember. I don't remember in general who started, no. But I remember that you definitely like this film, A Lot Like Love. And you gave me this and we listened to it together. We listened to the soundtrack together. Um, in an actual car? In a car on our way home from camping in um, on the South Coast. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, what were? We were on some island of Scotland. Oh, is that when we listened to it? <laughs> oh, okay, I've misremembered that. Okay, fine. Um, so in, on Arran then, we went... Isle of Arran. The Isle of Arran. We went on holiday to Arran and um, did very little, didn't we? I seem to remember we watched Friends. Um, we watched a very long episode of... Was it Poirot? Yeah, Morse, Inspector Morse. Morse. One and of the... We listened to this, this album. Um, and I remember when it got to track eight, which is Chicago's If You Leave Me Now. I'm pretty sure I said, oh, this is my favorite track on the album. And you were like, really? And then I was like, <laughs> oh, maybe not. And then track nine came along, which is better than, Brighter Than Sunshine by Aqualung. And I was like, oh no, this is my favorite. No, sorry, I got it wrong. This is my favorite song on the album. Mm -hmm. You were like, are you really? Um, and then by track 11, I was like, no, this actually, look what you've done by Jet is definitely, this one was the one I was thinking of. This is my favorite song on the album. It's um, not the most upbeat song. No, it's a very, it's, it's when I've listening, I mean, I don't usually listen to words, but I was listening to the words earlier. It's a pretty depressing song. Yeah. Yes, and I laughed at it because I'm like typical Adrian picking like a little morose song. Yeah, it's like little sad people. Um, Little sad people. It's a little song for sad people. <laughs> yeah, it's like it speaks to all. It speaks to all those lonely '90s teen boys in loose jeans. So not millennials. For love. Oh, probably not. No, they're oh. a bit older than that, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they're on the cusp, isn't it? That sort of. It feels like, how do you articulate this? Um, it feels like the sensibility of, the sensibility, the, 
course. Changes through the ages, right? Say more. Um, because of vocabulary changes. So for example, I'm talking to a younger person and they're talking about privilege and inclusivity. Oh. And so there's a sensibility around how we interact. Mm -hmm. So in the 90s, when you were sad, it felt it was mostly about, I don't know, or maybe it was it because we didn't have the internet. Maybe. I suppose our main reference would have been films, wouldn't it? Uh -huh. um, in terms of what people's other people's experience was um, in popular culture, books to a certain extent, but more, I think, films. So you see, uh, like, I think of um, lonely, sad people in the 90s as being misfits, you know, like school misfits. High school um, misfits. Yeah. Um, out of university misfits. Yeah. Uh-huh. People who became, people who actually then went on to become the successful popular people of the early millennium. What are you doing? Why are you leaning? Oh, I was just, sorry, I was um, adjusting my, um, sh my, like, my, where, <laughs> where the end of my, <laughs> I, I was just fiddling, but where the end of my jeans hits the top of my slippers, that's what I was adjusting, sorry. Mm, it looked, I was like intrigued because yeah, you know, I can't see what's outside of the frame. There's nothing outside the frame. This is the edge of my universe. Um, I was, so I read two books that you gave me. And I know this is not the book episode, yeah. but talking about the edge of universe and reality and things like that. Scarlett Johnson, is that her name? No, Scarlett Thomas. Scarlett Thomas. So um, I read... Like, interject that I've given you a lot of books over the 20 years that we've had each other, and those are the only two that you've ever read to the end, you told me a few weeks ago. Probably the only two I read more than two pages of. I don't like the books you've given me. <laughs> you know this. I know, and I, every time I give you a book, I think maybe this one will be a good one. Except for that, um, except for the long, sad one that I knew you wouldn't like. Yeah, you yeah. knew what, that's the one that Eric Patterson loves. He sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. And as did I. Um, and you sobbed and sobbed. Yeah, uh, a How little long like, did he for? Okay, People were like, I saw for 20 minutes and things like that. Well, yeah, easily. For the last, for the whole of the last, I think I sobbed um, intermittently throughout the book, um, also in public. And then I read the last 50 pages all in one go at home and just sobbed continuously as I read them. It was, the, it was amazing. I've never, I, I think one or two books previously have made me cry. And that really made me sob. Yeah. A Little Life by Hanya Yanigahara. And okay. yeah, I knew when I gave that to you that you weren't gonna enjoy that one. That was, that was one that I knew you weren't gonna enjoy. But the others, I'm sure I gave to you hoping that you would like them. Probably. So Adrian um, used to run a thing called Page One, which is a podcast. It is, it's still online. It's I'm still releasing episodes. An episode went out today. Why do you not tell me about this? If you were, really good friend you'd be subscribed to my podcast feed and you'd know well maybe i am subscribed and my phone hasn't like notified me anyway yes uh yeah so that's still good yeah page one podcast and there there has been a guest lots of times which is why i've given her one of the reasons why i've given her so many books but anyway what did you sorry what did you want to say about scarlett john uh, thomas oh that, so I read Our Tragic Universe and The End yeah. of Mr. Y, which you gave me. And yeah. she talks a lot about um, whether or not anything's real. Mm. Right? And, um, and you, you said there's nothing beyond the frame. And I think that is quite interesting. I mean, what if we are in lockdown forever? I think that's pretty interesting. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, that was a downer. Should we listen to the? Should we listen to the track? 
Yes. Um, okay. Yes. So people at so home. People at home, if you've queued up um, Look What You've Done by Jet, um, we're going to listen to that. We're going to listen to that now together. It's, uh, what is it, three minutes? Three minutes. Gonna listen, we're not going to listen to it all. Okay. We can negotiate that. Forward. But um, yeah. It's not my favorite song on the album. Oh, that's okay. Interesting. Oh no, I press play. Sorry. Shall we go at the same time? Yeah, let's press play at the same time. <laughs> and then you can tell me what your favorite song was. Okay. Okay, I'm pressing play now. It's just so good. You can see him going, oh no, it's the piano. What? Like I'm, oh, I've got one ear out. So I'm oh. like, this is how they would be looking. <laughs> yeah. And then the drama. Quick jazz creaking so badly. <laughs> quite a it's a sad angry song but yes, he's really mean he's talking about like look at what you've done like what well, what about does he have it i don't listen to the lyrics yeah, stuff. there's, no, he there's no responsibility for what happens yeah does he own his his shit i don't think he i'm so sorry I'm not supposed to be swearing on this program. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to issue I'm an I'm blushing. We are so sorry for the language that you may have heard Vera use just then. This is not blusher, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Stop touching your face. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I washed my hands. Okay. Oh, may, uh, uh, we've had a request to hum the song. Yeah, do you want to go for it? I, I don't think it would help if I hummed it. Oh, look what you've done, you've made <laughs> everyone. It's so accusatory. Look what you've yeah. done, you've made a fool out of everyone. So guys, you don't, you're not missing out on the song. I it's think you song. keep watching us because we're <laughs> entertaining. Oh God, I'm the bad cop, right? The bad egg, the rotten apple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna fade it out. Okay. Right, so we had a question about uh, my outfit. Uh, you can get it on the internet. It's called Sorry, I dropped a gun. I'm I'm too Pineapple excited. Costume. This is a test. This is a test of um our first show. Oh it's yeah, we didn't really say that at the beginning, but we're this is yeah. No, I did. Um, did you? That it was a test? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't concentrating. Pay attention to me. No. I was uh, there was there's lots to pay attention to, you know, with all the technical stuff that's going on technical and technical stuff. I'm on social comments. media because Adrian has refused to. I'm not really doing that at this point in my life. No, that's that's not your key strength. No, it never was. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas I just, uh, you know, I'm a, no, I can't even lie about it. I'm not very good at social media either. You're much better at it than I am. We've got the omnibus yeah. behind us. So yeah, yeah. I'm confident. Um, do you want to say anything else about the album? Um, no, I, well, maybe the only, the last thing that I would say about the album is that um, in common with a lot of soundtrack albums, um, there are songs that are like, that I would think of as big hits, like yeah. Chicago's If You Leave Me Now or Save Tonight like, by Eagle Eye Cherry, you know, that I'm really familiar with. And then there are other songs that I listen to them now and I'm like, did any, like, where did they get this one from? And I don't know whether that's just me, 
that I didn't happen to know, like uh, the one after Look What You've Done is Breathe, brackets 2 a.m. by Anna Nalik. And I don't, I don't know that song at all. Do you know right. that song? I once tried to learn it for an audition and okay. I couldn't do it. But about, so, I mean, I was looking through my um, soundtracks and I think it's quite nice when people who make stuff platform other artists mm -hmm. and especially so Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you would have um, one of the places they hung out occasionally was this like a uh, bar, no, a live music place. And so you'd oh, always have a band cool. in the background and it was really great. They would just like yeah. support artists. And um, yeah, and I think that's really nice to like bring mm. the kind of stuff that you love, especially if you feel that like you're a misfit and you're yeah. like, um, and yeah, you're bringing it to the people. And I'm like, that's a nice way to yeah. use your platform. And especially if you can, like, if you can weave it in in a way that makes it sound amazing, because that's the other thing with soundtracks. Sometimes I mean, you get just the song, obviously, but then when you watch the film, often it has a very different effect, or it has it somehow it comes out stronger, or it has more resonance because of what it's playing behind or the context in which it's playing. Don't you think? Yes. Yes. I mean, I was thinking of like an example of where that didn't work for me was um, what you said made me think of. Um, Coyote Ugly. Did you ever see that film uh, where she gets a job in a bar, doesn't she? And she's like dancing on the bar. And at one point, there's just a gig from like it. It seems like a gig by the calling with their whatever their their single was. It was a really I really liked it. Um, it's that song about. Did they sing wherever you will go? Um, I don't remember. It was something like that. It was like when I die, um, like I hope you have a good life, but I'll still be around. Like it was. It was something like that. It was also a very sad boy song. Um, but I, I seem to remember that inside the film, it didn't, like, it was just a moment where they were on stage singing the song. It didn't, it wasn't woven seamlessly into the, um, yeah, into the film at all. I have an anecdote, but it's also kind of like, hopefully not name droppy, but I was doing a thing and people were like, oh, let's play a tune before each event. And I was like, oh, as a joke, let's play that song from Coyote Ugly. And everyone looked at me like I was a complete idiot because one of the people I was doing the thing with was the lead guy. Oh. And I was like, I did not recognize it. <laughs> so they thought, okay. Yeah. So they were all coming up with really like funny, witty suggestions. And I was like, let's play the song. And they, you know, they thought I had a crush on him or something. And also that I was stupid. Maybe, no, they, yeah, they probably thought that you were um, currying favor. Yeah, I was, by that time of the project, there was no favor to curry. I was a lost cause from day one. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I've grown as a person. Um, do we have any questions? So it's eight o'clock. This is a 45 minute show. We can just chat on to, like to each other forever. Oh, yeah. did you have, uh, but anyway, you keep talking about the thing and I will look for any questions. Okay. Um, um, all I wanted to say like is, um, I finished talking about the, the music, like that's, that's done. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to reiterate that this was an idea that started yesterday. I got a message yesterday from Vera and then I got a message saying, hey, are you around to test it tomorrow evening? And I assumed it was just gonna be like a private test. Um, and um, in fact, not, um, we are <laughs> testing it. This is like an open dress rehearsal. And it will be on the internet forever. Yeah. I'm not sure I fully understood. Um, the implications of, of this, but I'm not regretting my decision. I just no. Feel, aren't you pleased? I'm very pleased. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I might not have been so easy to say yes if I thought through. You know what was what were you going to do? Yeah, I. Or I might have thought more about my music choice. No, this is perfect. It's okay. a good introduction to the kind of people we are. 
our history uh, together, our taste, like we're both really into rom-coms. We have a rom-com WhatsApp group. Um, it's international, it spans several countries. Yes. And we um, message each other about what rom-coms to watch that aren't too problematic and which ones are problematic and, and but we watch anyway. Yeah, we um, flag, we tend to flag the problematic, the problematic bits. Yes. And, you know, like, I think it's a good, I'm really interested in cult, popular culture that is secretly changing mm. our worldview. Mm. So because I, that's the kind of person I am, I like sneaky political stuff that's like in like shiny comedy or, you know, feel good rom-coms. Yes. Um, teenage uh, high school movies, my God, that is the place to like yeah. change the world. Yeah, because I, well, and I think you can do a lot of work either reinforcing people's ideas of what they should be doing, especially around relationships and friendships. I'm watching Pretty Little Liars at the moment and oof, it's, I mean, it's a lot, it's fun, but it is really troubling. Um, the kinds of assumptions that are made, like, especially around things like honesty. Like if something comes up, something came up in an episode that I was watching earlier today, where somebody's boyfriend hadn't told her about a traumatic event that happened earlier in his life. And she was, she was upset enough that she was about to just walk off um, without talking about it because she thought they were people who were honest with each other. And I find that really troubling. I'm like, of course you should be allowed to hold back things that you're not ready to tell somebody else, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like teen films, teen series, they're places where you can model slightly more either consensual behavior or, um, yeah, I, I can't think of the word, but um, yeah, the ways of being that are not so damaging. Yeah, yes. Adrian, I have a question. I'm going to direct it to you. What is yeah. your favorite rom-com and why? Of all time, <laughs> Dirty Dancing. What? That is Tell me why. I think partly because it's the film that I've watched the most. Um, um, I used to watch that with my sisters quite a lot. Um, oh my God, it's your sister's birthday? Oh, it's one of your sister's birthday? Yeah, yeah, it's my older sister's birthday today. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Um, yeah, but I just love it. I think it's a really well-made film. I think everything works in it. Uh, the, the, yeah, I, the, who, who's in it? Um, oh, what's her name? The woman, Jennifer Grey um, yes. is so good uh, as Baby. Um, and Patrick's is her name name actually baby in the movie? Or That's is it what they name? call her. No, I think she's. Uh, I should know what she's. What her real name is, but um, I. Oh, it's. I feel. I feel like I should know what her name is, but I don't. Um, but that, like, that's a film which models. Um, like some, you know, one of the characters has a, has an abortion at one point, and that's like a whole thing that they deal with uh inside this love story which is also about class um it's about age it's about being you know young and like not understanding everything um and also parents trying to protect their children um and having to learn what that oh means. her name was francis francis that's right yeah 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 yes. that's it um, um wait hang on did you know that it was set on a in a jewish summer camp Yes, not originally, but I did know that. Yes, I learned that this year. Oh, because a yeah. um, really wonderful artist and person, Brian LaBelle, I think tweeted or like contacted the people who are doing the the live stage version or the no, mm -hmm. um, the secret cinema the version. Secret cinema, uh -huh. yeah. So I was just asking about sort of like, will there be Jewish people mm. in the cast? Because it's like a big cast. Right. Uh, yeah. And I was like, what, what, what? And so I didn't know that Jewish camps, uh, summer camps existed, mm. but that's because they weren't allowed into like regular clubs, like, you know, like right. golf clubs and things like that. Okay. So they, instead of setting up their own club, they would just like get, like do one big camp. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think the only reason I knew it was because I watched uh, some kind of program about stand up comedy and um, whoever it was who made that was tracing American stand-up comedy back to these Jewish holiday camps. Um, uh, 
Ah. And, and saying, you know, this is the, that's the reason why there's a very big self-deprecating element to stand-up comedy. For example, it comes through this kind of Jewish lineage. Um, because there's that stand-up in Dirty Dancing who's really awful. He's he's just terrible. Um, nobody likes him. But mm -hmm. I think he just he, yeah he's the kind I guess that's the kind of entertainment that you have. Okay. Adrian, it's, yeah, it's not explicit in the film. Yeah, sorry. I have another question for you. Who is your favorite pretty little liar? Spencer. Yeah, that's easy. Why? I just like her. I think she's um, she's the least annoying of the girls. Um, she's fairly mature. I mean, I'm only on season, I'm on season three, the beginning of season three. Okay. Um, yeah. A question from someone in Wales. I think they're in Wales anyway. If you leave me now, what part will you take from me? Should I say who this person is? Yes. George. George. Mm -hmm. Is it a song lyric? Yes. Uh, also, yeah, it's <laughs> by Chicago. If you leave okay. me now, it's on the it's on the soundtrack album that we were talking about. Oh right, is um, it? Oh, maybe it's not a question. Maybe eight. George is just. No, oh, I think that's a reasonable question. Okay. The, there's the if you leave me now, you take away the biggest part of me is for, is the line in the song. Um, oh, I could have said about that song for years. I thought that was by Elton John. I don't know why. It just sounds like an Elton John song to me. Right. I think so probably it was only when you gave me this album that I realized it was by Chicago. Anyway, yes. What, why don't you answer that question? If you one? leave me now, I'll play George in this scenario. If you leave me now, what part will you take away from me? Why are you playing George and not yourself? Because George asked the question. I'm. Oh, if I leave George now. Yeah. What part will you take from me? Well, if you have any, what was it? Goat butter croissants, I'll oh, have those. Mm, okay. So I experienced goat butter croissants years ago. Is that how you pronounce them? Croissants. croissants. That's how I pronounce them, yeah. You speak French. On Pretty Little Lies, they, they pronounce them croissants. 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 Uh, mm, yes. But I think that's incorrect. Yeah. We've got... Three more minutes. Okay, yeah. Uh, what are the questions? We should work on our structure. Yeah, little note. Note to self, work on structure. Mm. I think this has worked pretty well. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, what, sorry, what are you gonna say? We've got three minutes. Um, come, on, uh, come on, questions, questions. No, they're, they're gonna be, uh, they're, they're, gonna, they're 20, 20 seconds behind so um, oh, no, do we have no. another prompt oh okay last prompt like a going away prompt yes this is prompt number three i don't know what happened to prompt number two. Oh no prompt number two do you know anybody else here <laughs> i know you <laughs> i met you in what year adrian 1999 oh my god or 1998 i don't remember now amazing yeah, 1999 for sure. I know a lot of people here. I'm really excited that this is going to be on the internet forever. I have okay. no sh I'm very proud of everything we have achieved in life and together, yeah. separately, <laughs> and right now. <laughs> we're, we're living and learning. I would like to dedicate this to Chelsea Handler. Mm. What? No, nothing. <laughs> I know about oh. your, your, I know about your Chelsea Handler thing. Okay, so that's the book that so Vera has given me lots of books over the years. I've given her lots of books, and she's given me lots of books. And the one that I think I liked the least that Vera gave me was <gasps> Chelsea Chelsea Bang Bang by Chelsea Handler. The least. Yeah, that was the one I. That was the only one that I nearly didn't finish. But the end was so good. What happened at the end? The stuff with her dad. Maybe. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the stuff with her dad. But you also, en you enjoyed the book, the audiobook. I may have said I enjoyed the audiobook. You didn't like Chelsea Handler's audiobook. No, I think I like that better than Chelsea, Chelsea, Bang Bang, yes. Of course, I, uh, and I know why, because you hadn't seen, like, that was your introduction to Chelsea Handler, and it's like yeah. quite early, early period. It's so annoying. 
Yes. And I, I also really don't like pranks. And yeah. she talks about pranks a lot. Yes, but you, we now know why. Do we? If you listened to the audiobook, <laughs> you would know. I did. I listened to it all the way through. I think I did like it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, oh my god it's time it's time, oh, it's time. Okay, to finish so i'm going to put my earpiece on and i'm gonna i'm gonna dance to my favorite song which you'll never know because you forgot to ask me oh no please tell us oh before we finish oh everyone we'll see you next week tuesday um we'll figure out if there's like a way of getting like an easier link to you beforehand but otherwise mm. subscribe to omnibus theater on youtube and do i have anything else to say nope thank you so much for watching thank you <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs>